Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another quickie reading. Uh, today we're going to be going over uh, Aspergue, which is the uh, Inception by Alec Benton Larry in an attempt to compete with the Sonic 2 comics, comics that uh, Chris was working on. Uh, without any further ado, let's get on to the article. This article discusses the award-winning comic series Aspertu and its relationship with Chris. For information about Aspertu, about the Aspertu series itself, see Aspertu in background, uh, which we will go over in the next article. So, Aspertu is the multiple award-winning comic series created by Alec Benson Leary of Eden Prairie, Minnesota. His deft artwork, gripping stories, and excellent characterization has resulted in the series gaining hundreds of fans in the few short months since its inception. Many of these fans were dis discont discontented followers of the Sonichu comics, comics who were turned off by the comics becoming exponentially more disturbing. We have similarities to Chris. All right. First drawing, Alex and Chris. There's a couple. Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, that's, uh, oh boy. Okay. Well, Alex stated, while well, Alex stated that Aspergeau is not a parody of Chris, there are many similarities between the two. Both of them are overweight, bespectacled, striped shirt wearing naive individuals here uh, both of them are over at the spectacled striped shirt wearing naive individuals who find themselves somewhat out of place in the world they both address the masses for youtube videos and both are preoccupied with finding a boyfriend for a girl to make us make into a sweetheart these similarities between the two characters has resulted in no shortage of rage from Chris. He seems to feel that the only reason Aspergeau exists is to poke fun at him. He also takes serious offense at the idea of a Sonic who suffers from Asperger's for some reason. Chris on Aspergeau. Yeah, I'm not going to bother quoting that because I don't feel like doing any uh, Chris mannerisms today. It's no secret that Chris hates Asperger's Syndrome, and presumably everybody that suffers from it. Due to some illusory sense of competition between Asperger's and other disorders on the autism spectrum, the knowledge that someone had created a series about an electric hedgehog Pokemon who suffered from the affliction did not sit well with him. He became even angrier when the creator of a series himself started sending him emails. The first recorded communication we had between Alec and Chris implies... Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. The first recorded communication we have, we referring to the creators of the quickie, we have between Alec and Chris implies that Alec had been in contact with him multiple times outside of the public view and that Chris had responded to these communications negatively. Chris didn't respond any better on his public mailbag, claiming that Alec was jealous of him and inexplicably alleging that the included fan art of Vespertru and Sonichu implied homosexuality. Upset that Chris would jump to such conclusions, Alec sent him another letter de de depicting Sonichu and Vespertru having good, masculine, straight fun. This letter was even more poorly <laughs> received. Undaunted, Alec continued to send letters to Chris's mailbag, thinking that perhaps the mail he respected so much really just misunderstood him. A few of those letters were ignored, some were coldly dismissed, and Chris's most notable responses were explosive outbursts of anger and hatred. Eventually, Chris began refusing to respond to Alec's correspondences or deleting his messages outright. In Aspergeau issue C, Chris made an appearance asking for help from the characters to save Aspergeau. Later, and he, later he and C-Chan Sonichu CWC met up with each other. 
leading to a standoff where Chris tried to shoot him. Chris responded to the comic, mentioning that he was set on fire in the comic. He didn't seem to notice that he was also called by the name Ian Brandon Anderson. <laughs> Nor did he notice the appearance of Liquid Chris. While the Asper Juice saga started, take, started to take off, Chris's schedule from his own comic had dropped drastically. Beyond this, Chris made clear that he also hates the comic because of its uncensored pictures and low resolution and blocky art. Here, we see Chris's hypocrisy in action. The, oh, uh, well, there is no example because I'm not clicking on any related artic articles for this video. This is just a straight up uh, Asper Chew article. Anyways, the uncensored pictures he's all up in arms over are just minors, po minor posters hung up mostly in Asperger's room, and either so, they are mostly hidden away by the characters' heads. Chris's uncensored pictures are done by the main characters in full view, despite the fact that Sonichu, Sonichu is supposed to be a kid's comic. Chris probably took the terms block and real res low resolution from the Family Guy episode Road to, the Road to the Multiverse. Of course, compared to Chris's art, it's the fucking Mona Lisa. It also helps that Alec is humble and doesn't try to act like his artwork is amazing and worthy of being hung in a museum. Yeah, see, compared to, you know, uh, Sonichu, Asperchu is legs better in regards to design. It doesn't look like a six-year-old made it. Anyway. The Asperpedia. After finishing the first three issues of his comic, Alec Benson Leary set up his own Media Wiki website where one could read all the existing comics as well as a number of articles about the world of Asper Chu and read fan mail answered by Mr. Leary. Soon afterward, portals were added to the site to the site for other notable comics, such as Evan Simon Chu and Sonic Chu is Dead creator Sean August Watley's latest project, Moon Pals. In February of 2010, more comics were added, including Alex's Sonic Chu, Sonic Chu Revolution, Sean's Sonic Chu is Dead and Sonic Chu is Gay, and Isabel Monday's Capering Berries, Jack Thaddeus recognizing the incredible profit and potential of Asperger, immediately began advertising the new website on the Wikipedia. Chris responded to these new ads and his newfound knowledge of Alex's website with a series of increasingly disturbing videos where he made his opinions on the matter quite clear. Alec, being a gentle soul, has not directly responded to any of Chris's offensive videos, where when asked by a concerned fan, he outlined his planned course of action as one of peace, citing his personal hero, Mahatma Gandhi, his webmaster, Mao Bamboo Ling, has opted for a more direct approach, speaking to Chris directly in two short YouTube videos. The large banner for Asperpedia was replaced by a link to the inf to information on the U.S. government's efforts to help the victims of the earthquake in Haiti, because Alec cares about the plight of his fellow man. Due to the growing popularity of Asperchu over Sonichu, the site later set up a fan portal where aspiring writers can make their own Sonichu fan fictions. Various pre-existing titles, including Sonichu, the animated series, were also hosted in the fan section. <laughs> there is even a parody version of a uh, Wikipedia set up by Mal, where totally fictitious articles of Sonichu related things are made, including photoshopped images of the original comic. Eventually, on May 27th and 2010, Mal took complete control of the Wikipedia, after which Alec and Vivian G started uploading Sonichu Season 2. The Wikipedia was then permanently deleted for Mal to gain the upper hand after noting the comic full, the comic fury staff that without Sonichu and Chris to bargain for a lower price, they must be forced to sign with him. The right to Asperpedia was then sold for $150,000. Holy shit! The Asperpedia was eventually shut down, shut down, however. According to Alec Benton Larry, 
it was run by a spaz lord who took it down randomly in a fidgety fit one day. I didn't care to fight for it. The 19th of January demands. On January 19th in 2010, Chris uploaded 12 new pages of Sonic 2 number 10, which are centered mostly around Asper 2 and Asperpedia. Ever the heroic savior, Chris pictures himself along with Ultra Sonic 2, destroying the slanderous Asperpedia and saving Alec's characters from their terrible affliction. With Alec giving it with Alec himself getting an extreme electric makeover and becoming Mitch Sonichu. Not content with this, Chris then issued an ultimatum to Alec through a blog post. Although within Alec's hands, Asperchu is a horrific joke, not only because of the uncensored nudity, wrongful character usage and all that, but also because the whole thing is drawn by a crappy, blocky, and low-resolution way. I still have no association with Alec Benson Larry or his Aspertu creator or his Aspertu character whatsoever. But I will forgive Alec for his error if he follows from my new plot and extreme electric makeover as a template. He is no longer Aspertu. Just call him Mitch Sonichu. Alec didn't listen to Chris's demands. Instead, keeping everyone there and just introducing Mitch Sonichu as simply Mitch Chu, who appears to be a gay stylist, as well as Wisp Sonichu as the character Wispy Sonichu. Punchy's slow in the mind, cousin. We have apologies here. In a February 1st, 2010 video, Chris finally admitted that Asper Chu was not a parody of himself or his original creator Sonichu. Creation Sonic you. Ah. And was instead a completely original character. He also apologized for spreading lies about Alec, suggested that he only responded to fan mail that puts him in a positive light, and for constant death threats against him. He also apologized for trying to commandeer Evan's Simon Chu character, though he tactfully avoided mentioning his blatant rip ripoff, Simo Simonla. Simonma? Simona? Simone La. I don't know if I'm even saying that right. Yeah. However, Chris's real motivations quickly become obvious as he proceeded to beg Alec and Evan to help him take down the Wikipedia ads, which had become increasingly homoerotic and insulting to Chris. A few days later, Chris made another video fully apologizing for his threats toward the four, deciding to give up Simone Ma and delivering a half-assed forgiveness blessing to Mao, in the hopes of finally removing the ads, which also included a parody of She Came For Quick JPEG, involving him and his mom in an obituary for Chris. On the 25th of February in 2010, Chris released the last pages of Sonic 2 number 10, in which he did kill off Simona, but turned around and brutally executed the Asperpedia 4. A revised version, inspired by Chris's sweetheart Jackie, replaced the death sentence with a lifetime placement among the Amish. Jackie ins insisted on a parade in honor of Alec and Aspertu, but Chris did not honor his promise. By 2017, Chris had become more in amenable towards Sonic 2 fanfiction and parodies. He apologized to Alec in a Facebook post that October and offered that if Alec would print Asper Chu through a self-publishing site, he would trade printed Sonic 2 in exchange. We have a couple of phone calls here. On the 9th of February in 2010, Mal sent Evan and Sean a series of seven phone call conversations between Alec Benson, Larry, and Chris. While these conversations were meant to stay between the Asperpedia staff, they were eventually leaked by Mal for the world to hear. An eighth and ninth phone call be between Chris and Alec followed on the 18th of February and 25th of February, respectively. We can't, well, we can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore, Chris, and Sonic Chu number 10. Despite Alec attempting to help Chris out several times during the phone calls, Chris would involve Alec along with Mal, Sean, and Evan. In the penultimate, 
pages of Sonic Chu number 10, they are portrayed as stupid, murderous characters who are tried by Quickville's count court for the murder of Simona Rosa Chu, as well as the theft and mockery of several citizens of Quickville. After a kangaroo court trial, in Quickville's favor, of course, Alec and company were sentenced to death. Alec specifically at a 10-button electric chair. He was electrocuted to death by various characters that were misrepresented. Misrepresented. In Asperpedia, including in, in Asperchu, including Sonichu, who states that he is not gay as he jointly ends Alex's life. Chris himself also joins in on the fun, and, I, and ironically, and also hypothetically, states that Alec is a dick lunatic. Oh, wait, no, hold on. Alec is a damn lunatic. Why did I... I don't know why. That was the word that came to mind. After which he helps fry him to a crisp, before proceeding to slowly twist... Before, he pro pro before proceeding to slowly twist Mal's limbs backwards until they snap using telekinesis. Following shortly after by crushing his heart, Evan is horribly mutated by Sandy Rosichu, whilst chained to a wall, and Sean is used as target practice by Bill the Scientist, Kel, and Allison. Amidst the brutality, Chris sees fit to apologize for some of his own wrongdoings for the Aspertu 4 as well as his fans. In recent updates to Sonic 11, Chris made good on his promise to revise Simonema. However, in the pages, it is revealed that she never died in the first place. This means that Chris set up the trial on a whim just so he would have the convenient excuse to kill Alec, Mal, Sean, and Evan. Sonic Revolution. When the Quikipedia was taken down during the Son Sim Simon Chu dispute, it appeared Chris was not going to budge and would possibly set up shop elsewhere. Considering Chris's laziness, not long how long that would take was anyone's guess. The possibility that no new comics would appear for days, weeks, or even months was likely, and this didn't take into account how often Chris's new digs would get hacked. Fortunately, Alec, being the nice guy that he is, decided Sonichu fans should not be deprived of the promised reboot. He took it upon himself to not only deliver fans new pages through Chris's site, but to, but to also take care of the gloomy copyright issues that Chris had been unwilling to tackle, all while still uploading no, new Aspertu comics. Chris, of course, took this entirely the wrong way. In the eighth phone call, he accused Alec of stealing his work and attempting to impersonate him. Also, while he expressed offense at the violence of some of the Sonichu Revolution strips, he showed no signs of grasping the way Alec's comics mocks the unoriginality, moral hypocrisy, sexual degeneracy, and generally warped outlook of Chris's original Sonichu stories. Wikipedia Advertisements Shortly after 110 megabytes return. 110 MB return from what may have been its billionth outage, the large as a large Aspertu ad appeared at the top of every article depicting Sonichu shooting Chris on the in the calves. Sound familiar? <laughs> While calling him a fat little son of a bitch, Chris claimed that he would that he won't let the ad get to him, but as anyone who has heard a Lowe's cow claim this before knows, this implies that he could possibly only be one good push away from an explosion. Either that, or he failed to grasp the ads, this ad like she came for quick JPEG ad parody. Jackie came across this ad thinking it was one of the Sonichu comics, though it was, thought it was as advertised. Fucking awesome. Chris explained to her that it was really a troll advertisement. Which, led, which eventually led to him showing her Quickie and her finding out what a lazy monster he is. Ending the online correspondence. So even if it failed to provoke a response from Chris, if managed to perform some, it managed to perform some small service in the larger scheme of things. Eventually, the ad was taken down, although it was quickly replaced with another sim smaller one featuring a callback to the scene of Evan's cold-blooded torture from Sonichu number 10. 
Chris has yet to respond to this, the most likely because he was too busy bitching about not being unbanned from the game place. Yet another ad was put up a few days later depicting Chris's final death. It was taken down relatively quickly and replaced with an Autism Awareness Month ad featuring a mention of the hated Asperger syndrome, no less. So it isn't unreasonable to, le to believe Chris may have missed this one entirely. Calling out Saga. After attempting to ignore Alec for well over a year and a half, Chris suddenly turned around and revealed a possible dox on Alex. He, he proclaimed that he's a fatty fat fat named Christopher who makes donations to the game place and doesn't have Asperger's. Like Surf Jack, Tito, and Thorg, he demanded reparations. Namely, that he make a video apologizing for infringing on a Sonichu copyright and then leave the internet. On the 30th of August in 2011, the day before Alec's deadline, Chris revealed that the true identity of Alec as 36-year-old Christopher Paul Whitney of San Antonio, Texas, better known as YouTuber sen YouTube sensation Fatman. Unbeknownst to Chris, the docs wasn't true. Not only does Fatman have a completely different voice than Alec, he would have no motivation to troll Chris, let alone create a comic about him. The information on Fatman wasn't even accurate. Fatman is from Rutman, Vermont, which he later pointed out, and since he was born in 1980, he would have been 30 or 31 when Chris made his video. But Chris being Chris was naive enough to believe that they were the same person. Especially since Fatman represented what Chris thought his tormentors were really like. Fatman later made a video response where he called Chris a dumbass for thinking he was Alec. Chris never replied to this video and presumably never saw it due to the death of his father a week after the revealed Batman. Once again, F in the chat for the internet lumberjack. One of the last surviving relics of the Aspertu saga met its demise during the fire which ravaged 14 Branchland Court on the 10th of January in 2014. The Aspertu medallion gifted to Chris by Alec was destroyed in the fire. As Chris revealed in the Facebook post on the 2nd of August in 2014. Not notably, the somber tone Chris takes on it on in this post when recalling the destruction of his other fan items seems to ju seems to suggest that his feelings toward Alec and Asper Chu as a whole may have softened over the years. Though he could have just been feigning this for sympathy to eBay. Notably, Chris states that he does not know who made the medallion or any other lost fan creations, suggesting that he might not even remember Alec at all. As for Chu was mentioned in the Cat Knight interview, in which other Spatchcook brought up brought up the series as as a potential threat to Sonichu's distribution in Europe, likely due to Alec's claim on the copyright of the character Mitch Sonichu. Chris reasoned that Aspertu is definitely not a canon character in his comics except for when he is rendering the issue moot as far as Chris is concerned. Once again, Alec is not mentioned directly. Idea Guy influences. So the Idea, idea Guys actually had much more of an influence than, you know, I had thought. I had no idea they, uh, but you know what, oh, who am I kidding? During the Idea Guy saga, Chris believe, Chris's belief in multiple dimensions was exploited and a sense of reality hijacked to make changes for many of the Chris's characters, concepts, and personalities of the real world, with him considering them to be valid. Ideas involving Alec and Aspertu include Chris wanted clarification over what really happened in Sonichu number 10 and asked Idea Guy if Alec and other Aspertidia 4 trolls were saved by becoming Amish or executed. Since Idea Guy was playing Payday 2 at the time. He is a character of Bodhi's bio for a revised version of Alec, telling Chris that Alec had escaped and gave Chris a picture of Bodhi saying it was Alec. Asperpedia, Aspertu is one of the 69 distant Shaunachus and Resichus. Alright, that'll do it for this article. Um, if you guys enjoyed, go ahead, uh, leave a like down below. And if you're not uh, already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. 
Um, go ahead and leave me uh, suggestions as to what articles, articles you would like me to review uh, later on. And with that being said, uh, thanks for coming in, and I will see you guys later. Bye!